wait on God. Also, amen, another word for, for, for time is chronos. How we know that? that and, 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 and the word time speaks of a process, a process of time. How we know that, some, that sometimes we got to go through the process, a process of time, amen, before God releases blessings, amen, amen, before we want, possess what God had for us. We, we, it, it ain't going to just happen in a day. It's all saying wrong with built in a day. Amen. You know, it, but, but, but God has to take us through the process. We got to go through the test. We got to go through the trials. And that takes time. You know? You ain't going to just take a million dollars to give it to your son or your daughter. Not when they're small. But after time. After they grow up, after they mature, after they prove themselves, after they develop character. And if you feel like I can entrust them with this kind of finance, then I'll put this inheritance in their hand. But if their character, if you if, they, if, your, if you knew your daughter was out there drugging up, getting high, blowing up all her money, throwing it away on all her friends like the product of son, you ain't going to give her that money. You want to see her develop character. You're watching her life. You know? It, it's just like this. Okay, we, we can get ready to go. I've seen this, actually seen this happen. I know this mother and father, they had about six or seven children. And so they left everything in the name of the oldest child because she was already grown out on her own, had a family, was responsible. But they knew the one sister. Every dime she get in her pocket, she going to buy something. She might not even pay her bills to buy her purse. So she get mad because they put it in the, 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 the only sister name. But you know what? You know what their mama said? Said, "I know if I put this in your name." You ain't gonna do nothing but throw it away. You might even sell it. That would let me know. And these folks were grown up, my old grown, not 21 grown, but 50 and 60 years old. <laughs> and your parents say, I can't give you no money or leave nothing in your name because you, you, you gonna just mess it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it in in the only sister name, this gonna be our property. Can't nobody sell it. And we're gonna split this money. You gonna get yours and they gonna get theirs. And then they knew it, that sisters already know it. When she was gonna get that money, they know she was gonna spend it on a, 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 a spree and spend that money. <laughs> Because she had she had developed no character, no sense of responsibility. And how I many know that sometimes we have to go through the tests of life so that God can develop us? But, and, and when he see that, that we're matured and we're grown in Christ and we're able to handle what he's already given us, he'll cause it to release it, to be released in our life. It, it was proven through the prodigal son. His father gave him his inheritance. He went out and blew it up, and then messed it up and lived a wild life. But, but even though his father restored it all back to him because he loved him and he came back home, but, but, but guess what? And then he lost everything because he was immature. He wanted the money. He wanted the fame. He wanted the glory. But he couldn't handle the responsibility I had. Sometimes your blessing will kill you if you don't develop character in this. Why do you think these football players make all this money? Some of them broke. How do you get broke for making forty-eight million dollars? Yeah. Tell me how you did it. I know one. He went to my pastor. This guy went to my pastor's church. Played football for the University of Alabama. He went to pro. His signing bonus was forty-eight million dollars. Now he ain't broke, but he sold back into the ministry. He blessed the man of God, and God continued to bless. Him. You know, when they said he got hurt and he couldn't play no more, 
And they played for the Washington Redskins. When they said he couldn't play no more, amen, and God restored him and healed him. Now he retired now. And, and you know, going back to the university, get his doctor's degree. Uh, he said, well, I'm through with this, you know. So he's moving back and working with Nick Saban and all them. But, but, but you know what? He was faithful to God. He sold into the ministry. He blessed the apostle. Apostle spoke blessings over him and told him. He said, you're going to pro. God's going to bless you. And God said, he's going to be on you. And he ain't going to let you get hurt. And he did. God prospered him and blessed him. But you know what? I look at that. I look at him now. He's younger than I am. I look at him now. He ain't out there living crazy. He walking around with big old gold chains on his neck with diamond rings bigger than your hand. Hey Amen. He got sins. He investing. He's saving his money. Hey Amen. How you know that? That God can't put a blessing in somebody. Like, you know, we going we gon' soon as we get it. Oh Lord, I'm going to get that big old house. You know? Just imagine this. If, if, if all my children grown and gone, why do I need a 10 bedroom house? Right. Waste of money. Now you can do what you want to with you. If, if, if that's what you feel like you're going to do. But to me, that's a waste of money. All my children grown, why do I need a big 10 house match? Everybody think different. I want to know who I can feed, who I can bless. Right. Give me a house or when they want to come home there and have somewhere to stay. Amen. But but God, I want to be able to invest. He told Abraham, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. Yeah. Not just to store it up for yourself. And my point today is this. Church, this is what I'm trying to say to you. Is this. Don't be weary. With what you're going to Because he said, in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. And all I'm saying to you, don't faint, don't give up. You know? Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your ministry. Don't give up on your business. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up. Don't, don't, don't give up. You understand? Don't give up. Don't faint. Don't quit. Sometimes we want to quit, Lord. You know, people think this, and I say this all the time, a minute tomorrow. And I don't mean that by this. I love doing what God called me to do. I love it. I love preaching. I love hearing the voice of God. I love ministering to people. But you better know you better be called to do it. Because it's not as pleasant and as exciting as you think. Some people think they see the preacher, uh, some of these preachers driving these big old cars and, 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 and pass the anniversary. They want to get in on the money. That's what they want to get in. They want to get out on the money. And, and, but you don't know the heck that them folks are going through. You ask any pastor. When they get that money, they deserve it. <laughs> Trust Because, see, everybody ain't good like all y'all. <laughs> y'all don't mean it. Everybody ain't good like y'all. I, I kid you not. Everybody ain't good like you. Some people are so difficult, man, till they're about to run the past the craze. <laughs> that's why you got to be called to do it. And I would tell people, wait on your ministry. Don't get in a hurry to do something that you think look good. You want to drive, you want to wear your suit? Be on TV. <laughs> what you don't know is when you get on that television, you just set yourself up. Everybody going to come against you. Everybody going to attack you. <laughs> yep. you, know, you, you. Do you think Kendall Copeland, Crimp, Dollar, T.D. Jakes, you think they having the ball? Y'all look at them, they having the best. Oh, they got nice cars. They got big old churches. Ask them about all the stuff they're going through. The criticism. Look on Facebook. Read some of the stuff on YouTube that folks say about them. They call them false prophets, the devil, and everything else. And everything else, the test is coming to make you quit. That's why your life and your ministry can't be built up on people. It's got to be built up on God. That's why y'all hear me say this all the time. Amen. I love you, but I can't make it without you. <laughs> because my life and my ministry ain't built on you being here. It's built on you. I love having you here. I love ministering to you. I love encouraging you. 
But my life is built on Jesus. Amen. And that's where you better have yours built at. Because sometimes man is going to fail you. But, and so if, if, if I fall dead today, guess what? You better have your foundation. You better be built on Jesus. Or you going to go back to what you come out of. People join churches. Oh, he got such a great personality. Man, he speak well. Oh, boy, he's charismatic. He's all this. He all that. You caught up in all them gifts. But he ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. Because eventually, them gifts, they ain't going to be able to keep you when you go through the test. I can prophesy to y'all right now, but my gift ain't going to help you when I'm out there being tested. Right. <laughs> it ain't going to work. It's going to shut down. <laughs> it's about my personal relationship. That's going to keep me when I'm out there. Okay, y'all, we're we, we going to go. Let, let me read the last read this one more time. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Now we got to treat each other well. He said, especially those that's in the house. Amen. And you know, it's just the way I just the way I think. If I got a wife, she ain't just my wife, she's my sister in the Lord. I see things the way God sees. And so God's a victim. She your sister and she your wife. That's the way you treat. How you treat your sister. I don't know what some people treat your sister. Right? But but I, I I, I, I don't mistreat my brothers and sisters. I love them. I do whatever I can do to help That's the way we're supposed to do to one another. So even though we're from different families, different races, we're all family in Christ. Amen. And so every chance you get, you ought to call up and say, hey, George, let me take you out to dinner, man. I told you, you ought to call me and say, God, I think you have to do a better way to feed you. Just <laughs> and every opportunity you get, you have to try to feed me. And I'm just saying, that one another, fellowship is important. Yeah. So as, as, when you have opportunity to do good, be nice. You know, I'm going to go home and eat. Uh, you know, but be nice to one another. Treat one another right. Amen. 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 So don't be weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you fight not. Amen. I know it's been hard. We all been going through. But if you endure, and you don't faint, God's going to bring you out. Amen. 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 Y'all be encouraged today. It's going to be all right. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Amen. That's called according to His purpose. Can we stand so we can really get out of here?